preferred by the Diamond Shore instrument. At this stage, we don't know whether it's synthetic or one of the rare types of natural diamond. So I'm going to place it into the stone holder and slide it into the sample chamber of Diamond View. Focus the visible image onto the table of the stone. And now I'm going to shine the ultraviolet lights onto the stone. This stone exhibits extremely intense orange fluorescence, which is a characteristic of a CBD diamond. Natural diamonds would typically show a blue fluorescence. De Beers are confident in the ability of their equipment to detect these new colorless diamonds and have sent their detection kit to gem labs around the world. But the question is, will that be enough to protect them in the long run? Typically, only diamonds above a certain size and quality are actually sent to labs for testing. The majority of us buy tiny diamonds from high street jewelers. And while they may be precious to us, diamonds so small are rarely sent to labs. The cost of testing them can be greater than their actual market value. As a result, the authenticity of small stones, once in the marketplace, may never be questioned. This is an entirely new challenge to De Beers. But they are adamant they will do anything to keep their market safe. Maintaining consumer confidence in diamonds uh, is worth any price that, uh, that the De Beers group needs to uh, spend to ensure it is there. You know, the diamond to a consumer is a precious thing. Uh, they want to buy it with confidence, they want to know what it is, and anything we can do to help that we will do. is high quality synthetic diamonds now exist and have the same fire and brilliance as naturals. Driven by the likes of Genesis and Apollo Diamond creating brand new markets,